Hello, everybody, and welcome to Every Rock Has a Story. I'm so glad you joined us today. I'm so excited to be with Professor Victor Guevara today. Victor is visiting us from Amherst College in central Massachusetts, and Victor is going to tell us about one of his favorite rocks. It has an interesting story that I think goes way back to the beginning of his life. Victor, thank you for coming to Every Rock Has a Story. Thank you, Ethan. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful to be here. Um, I've been a big fan of the series uh, ever since the beginning, um, ever since last year. So um, it's really cool to be here and be in this awesome studio that y'all have set up. I know. I still can't believe we have this amazing studio space. <laughs> so yeah. here's my rock. Um, it's not exactly the most exciting rock to look at. Um, <laughs> Sometimes it's the least exciting rocks by appearance that have the most interesting stories to tell. I, I, yeah, I'd say so. Um, and, and so this rock is, is a rock called basalt. And I think you've talked about basalt we have. in previous episodes. We did. We talked about it in episode five. Remember lava rock? This is my lava rock, real basalt. But this is from Hawaii. This is different, I think, from the one that Victor's got. This rock is from the area where I grew up in New Jersey, in northeastern New Jersey, kind of nearby New York City, right? Um, and I owe a lot to this rock, actually, mm -hmm. because I think this particular rock is what made me kind of really fascinated with geoscience and geology. So I remember sitting in, in my middle school classroom one day, and uh, I was kind of bored about whatever we were talking about. You probably weren't talking about rocks then. <laughs> Talking we were not talking else. about okay. rocks yeah. then. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was looking out the window of my classroom in, in sixth grade, um, and I, I remember looking out, and there's this hillside that you could see from my, my middle school. And I remember looking out and noticing this big cliff on the hillside mm. I'd never noticed before. And I remember thinking, huh, that's interesting. You know, I, I grew up surrounded by roads and cars and shopping malls and supermarkets that I'd, I'd never really kind of, up until that point, I'd never really been, i never really bothered to like really look around at, at kind of the, the natural landscape around me. And you know, I, then it got me thinking, there's this big cliff on this hillside. It must be like hundreds of feet tall. Yeah. Um, and um, it got me thinking, why, why is there a hillside in the first place? I remember hiking up there one day with my, my dad. And it's a, not, not a long hike, but uh, there, it turns out there's a big quarry that used to be there. They used to quarry out this rock to make buildings out of. Oh, really? Yeah. And I remember when I was in middle school, that was like the early days of the internet, where you could look up information and Victor, access information. The early days of the internet. Are you telling me that there was a time when you were growing up that there was no internet? There was a time when I was growing up when there was no internet. Imagine that. Keep going. And I remember sitting in the public library and, and sitting on the computer and, and looking up <laughs> this exact question. Why was there this cliff there? Why were there these, these big ridges of, or hills um, in, my, in my hometown? So I got my answer on the internet, <laughs> um, and it turns out that, that there was a volcano in my hometown, and that blew my mind. Not today. Not today, no. 200 million years ago, there so was a volcano. Th that rock is 200 million years old. Right, this rock is crystallized lava, solidified lava, from a volcano that was in New Jersey 200 million years ago. Wow. And um, I mean, it's still kind of, it kind of fascinates me today, um, but back then as an 11-year-old, I remember thinking to myself, wow, that is something, right? Because, <laughs> uh, you know, not only was that kind of the first time I'd really bothered to um, kind of ask uh, questions about the landscape around me um, in my hometown, that was also the first time I learned about geological processes and, and volcanoes in New Jersey, volcanoes in the distant past. Yeah, it, I mean, I got to tell you, Victor, that's really exciting. It, it, this story resonates with me, too. Some of my favorite first minerals were little sh sheets of mica that I found right at the top of the hill in my neighborhood. But this one also reminds me of some of the other stories we've talked about. If you guys remember episode 48, 
we talked about what happened 200 million years ago, and I think, Victor, your rock is also the story of the rifting apart of the Atlantic. Am I right about that? That's absolutely right, Ethan. Right, yeah. So um, this basalt was uh, erupted from a volcano that uh, spewed out these really big lava flows, hundreds of feet thick, um, that was associated with the opening of the Atlantic Ocean when North America started to rift away from Europe and Africa. Yeah. So it's amazing to think back to that time. So just imagine this. You don't usually think of Metro New Jersey as a place where you have volcanoes. But if you go back 200 million years, not only was there a volcano right outside of uh, my middle school. middle school, <laughs> but if you looked out the other window of your middle school, you'd probably see what? Uh, I think you'd probably see Africa. Yeah, right? right. Just there because Africa hadn't split apart from North America yet. And the other cool thing about 200 million years ago in Metro New Jersey, guess what lived there? Victor dinosaurs. It's right. If Victor wasn't in the, in the middle schools, dinosaurs were in the middle schools. That's correct. Yeah. So um, when these basalts, when these lavas were flowing out onto the land of New Jersey, there were dinosaurs making footprints in New Jersey, in Connecticut, in, in Massachusetts, now where I, where I live, yeah. in, in Amherst, uh, Massachusetts. Um, and so it, it kind of comes full circle a little mm. bit in that um, I can look out my office window now in Amherst, in western Massachusetts, and um, I can see a, a ridge, a, a hillside, that is the geologic equivalent of the hillside, of this lava flow. Wow. Um, that was formed 200 million years ago that I was staring out um, the window of looking at um, from my middle school in New Jersey. That, that's a great way to end this story. Thank you, Victor. Hey, everybody, that was another great story from Victor, who told us about basalt, good old basalt. Basalt's a really common rock, but what I liked about Victor's story is that it started at home, where he grew up in New Jersey. Who knew that there were ancient volcanoes spewing lava across the land and giant rift valleys in New Jersey? Well, you do have to go back 200 million years. But I think it's really, really fun to realize that when Victor was in middle school, he looked out his window and he saw that basalt on that cliff and it got him excited. It got him interested. It got him curious to ask, I wonder what is the story of that basalt? And do you realize that today, in his same college office as a professor at Amherst College, he looks out the window and he sees the exact same kind of basalt, 200 million years old. I wonder if there are rocks in your backyard or rocks you can see out of your school window that tell a story that might be so much more fascinating that you could possibly imagine. Take a look at the rocks in your neighborhood the next time you get a chance and wonder what are the stories they have to tell. See you next time. Bye-bye.